I'd like to go ahead and start seated this morning and we're actually going to do a practice kind of playing with our feet today a little bit and um, so I just want to have access to our feet uh, to begin with. Um, let's take a moment to center. So making yourselves comfortable sitting up on a prop can sometimes be really nice. Checking questions are so much fun. Checking questions. I know I muted everybody already. <laughs> I think with all of this uh, confusion, we just didn't do our checking questions today. So go ahead and place your palms down on your thighs. Notice if your back feels supported or if you want to make any adjustments in your seat. as you softly close your eyes, let's go ahead and just find our way into our breath. Take a moment to follow your breath. Observing the body breathing. And check in with your physical form, your physical body. It's what usually talks to us uh, most loudly or what we pay attention to the most. And so from head to toe, a little scan, noticing um, any tightness or tension or areas that just need a little bit of attention from you today, care and nourishment. You may have noticed something right when you woke up this morning or as you moved about your day. Allow those or communicate with those areas that you'll, you're here to listen and take care of them. And then from there, we can move into our energy and breath body and noticing maybe any sensations just beneath the skin. This area is where we pay attention to our breath and notice the quality of our breath today. And this is also where some of the energy systems like the nadis and the meridians and the chakras reside, those energetic systems. And we can notice the mental and emotional body. Notice what emotions are there at the surface with you today, or maybe some thoughts that are taking you away from the present moment. And your breath is one of the best anchors you can work with throughout the practice to help bring you back to the present moment. So when you notice you're caught up in a story or a thought, invite your awareness to come back into the breath paying attention to the breath. And the next layer in is our intuitive body or intuition, inner knowing, GPS. And just recognizing how connected you may feel or not feel to that system today. That place where we can listen to that small and hear that small, still inner voice that's guiding us to our own truth. And in this practice, my intention is to help you strengthen that so that the choices that you make in this time are for your highest good in all those layers, your physical, your energy, your mental and emotional. And the more we can tune into our own truth from that 
inner wisdom, the easier it is to reside in the bliss body, that deep place within us that's always at peace, where the external world and circumstances don't throw us off our balance for as long. It's not that we'll always be in that place of peace, but when it happens, when we get thrown out of there, we have these tools to help us come back continuously again and again, back into that center of bliss. Begin to deepen the breath. Just take about 10 long, slow, deep breaths here. Eyes closed, bringing oxygen into the body with the intention of taking in what you need for yourself on each inhale. And as you release the breath slowly out, it's a letting go, a surrendering or a softening. And just connect into what this means to you. Complete those 10 deep breaths. Allow the breath to come back to its own rhythm for a moment. And I'd like us to bring our attention to our feet today. So our feet do so much for us in life. And we oftentimes don't pay attention to them until something's wrong or something's bothering us with them. And so I'd like us to just take one foot and we're just going to go ahead and gradually just massage it and just notice if there's any points of tenderness and we can really go along the tips of each toe. The tips of each toe represents the crown of the head. And you can go down the length of each toe, kind of find your way in the the ball of your feet as well as the top of the foot. And just kind of work your way through. And again, just noticing any tender points. We're gonna focus on a few points here in a moment. It's a little reflexology. Make sure you get into the arch of the foot and through the center of the foot, the outer edge the ball of the foot, your heel. And then just kind of gently massaging almost the whole foot. And then we'll switch, move to the other one, do a full massage there before we move into the points of the feet. So again, just kind of starting with the tips of the toes. Working down the full length of each toe, going into the ball of the foot. And you might have a point on one foot and it's exactly the same point as the other, or it could be totally different, right? It's, it's, it's really fascinating, actually. Or at least I think it is. <laughs> Make sure you get down into the heel. And then what we're going to do is first, so it's springtime. There's a lot of allergies right now. And so what you're going to do is look at the, um, the mound of your big toe, both toes, it's the same. And if you go right in the center of the toe, that's sinuses. Right, so we're gonna take the thumbs and press just gently, a little acupressure point right there in the middle of the toe. 
right? And just take about four or five nice deep breaths here. And then start to notice if anything changes um, in your sinuses. Does it, do they open up a little bit? Or maybe nothing. That's okay too, right? Just kind of noticing for you. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and move to, um, if you go right, you've got the, the arch of your foot, and we're going to go just below that. It's above the heel, but below the main arch of the foot. And again, I'm going to take my thumbs, so that's easiest for me, to grab right there. Just gentle pressure, and this is the adrenals. Right? And so with everything going on in the world right now, a lot of people adrenals are affected and in general they really are um, so many people are under low chronic stress all the time and so our adrenals are becoming depleted um, and so this is a way to kind of stimulate them so just take a few deep breaths there And then go ahead and release that. And um, we're going to come, we're going to place our feet flat on the floor. And you're going to come right in between the second and third toes and move up about an inch or an inch and a half. And there's two little points here that are for the liver. Now, in the future, if you want to, what did I do? Oh, um, lavender essential oil is really nice on these two points. So this is um, a balancing for the liver. Um, it relieves stagnation in the body and it's really um, very centering overall. So I've been using this daily um, and just using this right before my practice. And so just take a few breaths into this point. And again, if you have some lavender essential oil and that's something you enjoy, it's really nice here. Notice that the points are tender, right? That's usually indicating something. You can use this more often. And then we'll go ahead and release that. And now let's go ahead and just take one foot and start to circle it around, point and flex, play with the toes. You might even take the toes and just kind of pull and stretch them back a little bit and notice any tension in the arch there. So every organ in the body has a point on the foot as, as well as the spine. Uh, so foot re reflexology is something I find rather fascinating, although I haven't done a lot of study with it. Um, but it's pretty fascinating. And then just kind of curl the toes under and just, and just kind of waking the feet up. And then the next foot, stretch the toes back. Notice the, any tension in the arch there. So again, just like the rest of the practice, we're not trying to um, do anything so intensely it's painful, please. And if you have any sensitivities in your feet, really take care of that, don't overdo it. So as we move through this practice, if something's too intense, um, please take care of yourself and back off. Okay. okay, so then let's go ahead and move to the side, anything you're sitting on, and find our way to uh, hands and knees. Now, for now, we're going to have the tops of our feet in the floor, so the toenails in the floor. And we'll just come into our cat-cow. So this is our usual warm-ups here. Let the feet relax there. 
And in this position, um, some people feel already quite a stretch through the ankle. This could be um, if your ankles are particularly tight. And then from here, let's take this into our chakra vakasana. So the exhale draws you back into a child's pose. And inhale, lift through the heart. Back to all fours. Exhale back. So for the most part, this is how we usually move back and forth in this practice with our feet, the tops of our feet in the floor. So this is pretty familiar. And then the next time you come up, flip the toes under, right? So now that stretch we just did was kind of helpful. And notice the difference now as you draw back from here. So exhale, release back into that child's. And you don't go back as far. The heels are lifted off the floor, but now we're starting to stretch to the toes and the arch. And then inhale back up. So you decide how far back to take this according to what you have going on in your feet. So the next time you draw back, if it's comfortable for you, Let's go ahead and stay there for a moment. You can bring your head to your hands and the farther back you take your sits bones, the more stretch you're going to feel in the, in the feet. And just take about three breaths here into that stretch. And then we'll find our way back up. Kind of flip the toenails back to the floor, or the top of the feet, and draw back again, just kind of reversing that stretch. Let the feet relax. Take a couple of breaths here. You can feel the blood flow. I feel a rush of energy in my feet, or heat almost. And we'll come back to hands and knees, curl the toes under, and now let's come into down dog, but we're bringing our attention to our feet. So just pedaling one heel into the floor, then the other, and just kind of feeling that. You can take one foot and just kind of flip over a little bit, stretching the toes and come back down again. All right, so any movement, that brings awareness to the feet and what's going on there for you this, today. Just kind of notice that. You can come all the way up onto the balls of the feet, bringing the heels as far as you can off the floor and back down again. And then we'll go ahead and Find your way back down to child's pose, tops of the feet in the floor, and draw back. Take a couple of breaths. And then let's go ahead and find our way up one more time here. Flip the toes over. Okay, now for some of you, you're gonna to wanna to stick to the child's pose, just drawing back here, and that's enough of a stretch, and maybe even that's too intense, you can stay right here, and that's enough for you. And then for some of you, you may wanna come all the way up, we're actually gonna sit on our heels. Okay, pretty intense, you have to decide whether that serves you. And 
Just breathe. Just take a couple more breaths here. It won't stay too long. And then go ahead, release that. Bring the tops of the toes back into the floor. And some of this is also, I understand, dependent on knees. So not everyone can do this because of knees. I, I get that. But you can sit all the way back, and that might be enough for you. Or if you can, some of you might be able to pick the knees up off the floor. And this is really stretching the ankle and the top of the foot. So keeping mobility in our feet is really important for our balance. as we move on the earth and then let that go back to hands and knees and then again down dog go ahead and come into down dog and let's find our way just three rounds very slowly with our breath into our mini flow just to warm up a little bit more so inhale come to the knees and exhale into child's Inhale to knees. Maybe some of you would feel nice to lengthen the heart forward. And exhale down dog. So two more rounds here. Inhaling to knees and alternately exhale between child's pose and down dog. Take your time. The next time you find your way into down dog, we're going to pause there. And take a few breaths. Just allow yourself to be in Adho Mukha Svanasana, lengthening the spine, bending the knees slightly if you need to. Feel the feet, just notice the feet. They're probably feeling quite awake. And then we're gonna go ahead from here, walk the feet to your hands, so you're up to the front of your mat if you can. So you're finding a standing forward fold. I'm gonna shift just so I'm in the camera here. So you can place the palms in your floor. If you have a block, you can use a block. And just lengthen the spine over. Release the head. Even release the shoulders here. You can move side to side. Take a look at your feet and notice where you place them. Are they hip width apart? Are they parallel? Right, just kind of noticing where our habits go, right? So we habitually move in certain ways. And just notice where do your feet typically go? And then take your hands to your hips, bend the knees, press down through both feet to come up. All right, all right. So now let's go ahead and make any corrections with the feet from where you originally placed them. And we want to find them, so we're in Tadasana right now, and we want to find them in, um, or in alignment with our hips. Okay, so maybe a little bit wider. Notice if you tend to have a narrow stance. And notice how that affects um, what happens through the rest of the body. That's kind of what I want to pay attention to today is noticing where, where we start with our feet and how it affects the rest of the posture. And so, again, you can try that. Try the feet narrow. Just kind of notice what that feels like. And then notice when you bring them more hip width apart. Right? That's how we, we figure these things out, is just kind of trying it and noticing the effects. And then notice where you tend to weight your feet. So some of us tend to pronate, which means we have flat feet, that's me, and I don't have uh, much of an arch. That would be pronation when we go in. 
Supination is where somebody has a really high arch. Uh, they tend to be a little bit more bow-legged and the weight goes into the outer edges of the feet. Okay. And if you play with this a little bit, I want you to notice how the effects travel up the legs. What's happening in the pelvis, the low back, the hips? Where's the tension? Where does it feel loose? Right? And just kind of noticing that in your body. This is what you need to discover. And then finding neutral and finding your feet evenly weighted. So for me, I actually have to lift through my arches a little bit because I pronate. If you supinate, then you have a lot of um, pressure and weight to the outer edge of the feet. You're going to want to try to anchor down to the mounds of your big toes. And so then we can lift and spread the toes, yoga toes. It takes practice on that. We create a larger platform from which to stand on. And then notice, do you tend to be weighted more forward or back? There's a lot going on in our feet. And then from here, we want to see that the mound of the big toe and pinky toe are equally weighted in the floor and that you're equally weighted through either side of both heels. Okay. And just take a moment here. It's going to probably feel awkward. We don't ask ourselves to really pay attention to the feet and what we, how we move through the world on them and how we stand. Okay. Take a few breaths here. So we're really going to play in some standing poses this morning, holding in some standing poses. And notice when we change our feet, what happens to the rest of the posture. So start with our feet now, nice and evenly planted in the earth. Now, just kind of notice the energy up through the legs. We want our hips aligned over the knees and the knees are aligned over the ankles. You can take a look there. Notice that this is fatiguing for you too, because it will be. If you don't stand like this very often, you're going to notice it starts, it's difficult. And then the shoulders aligned over the hips and the ears aligned over the shoulders. So we're really lengthening, we're creating space in the spine, but we're drawing that space up and creating that length through the feet. Right? Now let's go ahead, inhale, reach the arms overhead. Nothing changes in the lower half of the body. Root down through the feet as you lift up through the fingertips. You can even shift the gaze up to the ceiling if you want. Bring the palms together. Exhale down through center. Softly bend the knees all along the way. Nothing changes in the feet. Okay, so keep the weight distributed. It's going to take some practice. And then inhale halfway. Place the hands on your shins. And then exhale fold. Arms either reach behind you by your side or out wide. Engage the core, lengthen the spine. Press down to reach up. Just being aware as we move through this, exhaling, fold, inhaling, halfway, exhale, release, and inhaling back to standing. Bring your, continue to keep your awareness of what's going on with the feet and how that may or may not be affecting the rest of the pose and the movement. It's kind of moving through it at your own pace. You can even, again, I encourage you to play a little bit, release the foot back to maybe where you naturally go, and then move through the flow and see if there's anything that's different for you. It may not be. So if you tend to pronate or collapse in the arches, go ahead, let them collapse and just see what transpires as you move in and out of the pose. Do you notice that your weight distribution changes as you fold forward versus standing? Our bodies are amazing things and how they adapt and modify as we move. Time pause in the forward fold when you get there. Let 
allowing the head to relax, the shoulders to relax here. Feeling a gentle stretch through the back of the legs. Bring your awareness into the feet. Notice if they're evenly planted. See if you can come back to all four points again. Arch is slightly lifted. The weight evenly distributed along the entire footbed. And then find your way back to standing. Inhale, reach up. And then we're going to take a hold of the right wrist and then exhale to the left. And so we're going to take a few deep breaths into that right side body. And the tendency is to lean over to that left foot. So what shifts if you keep the weight evenly on both feet? Just notice that you can shift over to the left, feel that, press down through the right foot so it's equally weighted in the earth and feel that. That's how we discover it. Really discover what's going on for ourselves. And then come back up and we'll do this on the other side. Take a hold of the left wrist, exhale to the right, breathe into that left side body. Go ahead and lean into the right foot. See how that feels. Anchor that left foot back into the earth. Feel that. Notice how it shifts what's happening through up, up through the rest of the body. And then inhaling, come back up. Release the arms on the exhale. Bring the palms to the sacrum. Inhale, lift and open the heart. Draw the elbows back. Gaze up to the ceiling. And then as we came into this little bit of a back bend, we're lifting through the sternum. We're, trying, we're starting to bring our weight back just a bit. What happens when you anchor equally through both feet versus one or the other? Or maybe what happens if you bring your weight back to the heels more than the ball of your foot in front of your feet? What happens to your center of gravity? And then on your next exhale, bring the arms or the hands down the back of the legs back into your forward fold. One more breath here. And use your core, lengthen the spine, and inhale back to standing. And into the heart. So let's shake the feet out a little bit. You feel that? A lot of, uh, a lot of energy in the feet. Um, I, my feet were actually starting to feel tired, all right, and standing that in that way. So I'm just noticing what was there for you. Okay. So um, from the front of your mats, we're going to step our right foot back directly behind our right hip. So a warrior one. Okay, we're not bending into the front knee quite yet. So we've talked about this before. If my feet, if I align the arch of my back foot with my front heel, it draws this hip back, that right hip back. And it's hard to square the hips. So if I bring my feet hip width apart, so I'm going to bring that foot back out so my feet stay hip width apart in this pose. Not always in the other warrior poses, but warrior one, this is really helpful. Now find those four points in your feet. Okay, so I'm equally weighted between the ball of the mound of the big toe, pinky toe, and either side of the heel on both feet. If I'm not, I might be uh, supinating where my arches are really lifted and the mounds of my big toes aren't on the floor or I might more commonly pronate and now I'm all on the weight of the ball of my the mound of my big toe. Right? So where can we find that even distribution? And then bend into the front knee. Notice what shifts in the back foot. Now we're starting to put more weight on the front foot. The back foot maybe starts to uh, feel unweighted. Sometimes I see people's heels pop off the floor. 
or I see the arch collapse. So keep that lifted, keep the feet active, and let that travel and inform the body on the way up. Right? And then from there, we can bring the arms overhead. If you choose, you can keep them at your heart if you prefer. Right? Gazing straight ahead, engage the core. Breath is flowing, feet active. So keep pressing down through both feet. And when we activate that back leg, so I'm, I'm hugging the muscle to the bone of my right leg, my foot's equally planted as best I can, and now I don't feel like the front leg's doing all the work. I'm, I'm letting the back leg take on some of the load. Let's take three more breaths here. And after that third breath, release the arms and step that back foot forward. And again, notice what's going on with the feet. So shake that out a little bit. The more attention I'm bringing to them, I really can feel it, All right? So now we're gonna take that left foot, step it directly behind that left hip in alignment with your left hip. Then playing with the feet. So you've heard me mention before that in every um, practice or every pose rather we want to start with the foundation and we work our way up in the pose whether that's seated prone standing doesn't matter so always with the foundation first so all four points of the feet particularly notice what's going on in that back foot and if you're collapsing in the arch okay. then we might bend into that front knee you find your um, how deeply you want to right and then we engage the core, we just keep moving up the body, spine is tall, arms come overhead, gaze straight ahead. Can you lift and spread your toes? And we didn't do this on the other side, the tendency is to clench our feet. So can we relax the toes and maybe even lift and spread them, open up a little bit. Keep breathing. Let that back leg and anchoring of the back foot Take some of the workload out of the front. Release the arms. Step the back foot up, shake that out. Maybe even flip the feet over and just kind of move around through the toes or shake them out a little bit. I'm gonna come back because we're gonna do a, a warrior two, so I'm gonna go sideways to you. Um, so from the front of our mat, let's step our right foot back. Now in warrior two, you might find it's nice to align the front heel with the arch. Right? It enables us now to open the hips a little bit more to the long side of the mat with ease. Okay? So, and that's up to you. Maybe it doesn't feel that way for you. All right? What's your truth here? So all four points of both feet. The back foot now is open to about a 45 degree angle. You can go as much as 90, but we don't want to open up more than that. Okay? Find all four points so the arches are lifted. Back leg is straight and strong without locking into the joint. Bending into the front knee. Spine is tall. So there is a tendency in warrior two to lean over and into that front leg. But imagine you have a rod going from the earth up through the crown of the head. You can't fold into that left side, straight up and down. Okay. Then from there, the arms float up shoulder height. The gaze out through the left fingertips. And breathe here. So we move through our day from a place of being grounded into the earth, 
or be feeling a sense of groundedness within ourselves, centered, calm, supported. There's a lot going on there with the feet. Relax the arm, straighten the front leg, step that back foot up. So you come back to the front of your mat, shake that out, shake the feet out. And I'm just going to switch sides just so you guys can see me. All right, and then again, starting with our feet, hip width apart from Tadasana, mountain pose. Step your left foot back. Right. Open the hips. So does it make it easier to adjust? that foot to be in alignment with the front foot, back foot in alignment with it, or a little bit wider for you. And then the foot, now the back foot, do you wanna have it about 90 degrees or a little less? Right. Find what works in your body. Then we bend into the front knee. Right. Spine is tall. Breath can flow. All four points of both feet continue to anchor into the earth. Let that energy travel up. Arms float up, shoulder height. Then we take the gaze out the, the right fingertips. And you can really notice, we didn't play with this on the other side, but you can take a look at your front knee and you'll be able to see if you collapse into the arch of the foot, look what happens to the knee. It's going to drop in. And then if we go too much to a, a supinate or to the outer edge, the knee is going to go up. That's much less common. That's not what I see. I see a lot of collapsing in the arches with the knee collapsing in. So that all begins with the foot. So when our foot is equally weighted there, we keep the knee in alignment over the ankle. Take two more breaths here. And then relax the arms, straighten that front leg and step that back foot up. Shake it out. Good. All right, so we're gonna start with the right foot back again. We're gonna come into our warrior two. So, I mean, excuse me, we just did warrior two. We're gonna come into extended side angle. And what you'll notice is there's no, you're finding the exact same foundation that we just did in Warrior Two. So for me, I like aligning my front heel with the back heel or arch of that foot. My width of my stance is exactly the same. And then I'm going to slowly bend into that front knee. I'm keeping my spine. So the only thing that changes, everything from the hips down is exactly the same. All now I'm going to do is take the, my left forearm to lightly rest it on my left thigh. Okay. Everything down below stayed the same. I'm going to continue to keep that back foot anchored, back leg strong. Okay. And now we can take the right arm up and over. If you choose, you can keep it low. If you have anything going on in the shoulder or neck, you don't have to bring it overhead. But if you'd like to, reach to the right fingertips, create a nice Long line of energy from the right fingertips to the outer edge of that right foot, down that entire leg, down that side body, and then you can rotate the gaze up underneath the right arm to the ceiling and breathe. slowly come back up kind of through a warrior two relax the arms and step that back foot forward shake it out again 
And notice how the feet are doing when we bring so much attention to them, okay? All right, left foot steps back, finding our warrior two foundation on the other side. Whoop. So again, find that exact same stance that we just did on the, when we did this side the first round. Bend into that front knee. Core stays strong, spine tall for now. And then we keep a length through that right side by. So I'm not collapsing to bring that fore, forearm into my thigh. I'm really reaching and creating some space between that right side body and my thigh. Then notice when we brought our attention to another area of the body, what happened to that foot back there? So keep anchoring all four points of that back foot, leg strong. Then the left arm reaches up and over. If you choose, again, you can keep it here. Same idea with the knee, right? The front knee, We're take a peek. Notice if that knee dropped in, where's the energy in that foot? The knee will follow. Rotate the gaze up underneath the arm when you're ready. To the ceiling, if that's okay on the neck, and breathe. Come up through a warrior two, straighten that front leg, release the arms, and step that back foot forward. Shake it out. So lots of strong holding today, really finding our feet, finding the earth. So go ahead and come to the center of your mat. Let's not bring a block with us. And then find your way to the center of your mat. So we're going to take a wide stance. We're going to find a straddle. Okay. And if I was to bring my arms up shoulder height and hang a string off of my wrist, they would, it would approximately come to my ankles. So that's the width we're going to start with. Okay. But that may not work for everybody. Let me just lower the arms. So right here, I want you to notice what you experience up through the legs when the feet are parallel. So they're, they're running parallel to each other right now. Okay. Feel what's going on through the hips, maybe even into the low back. Just notice for you, what are you feeling there? What do you feel if you bring the toes wide? Okay. What changed? Like my hips opened up. I felt that in my, my hip flexors. Right? And then I'm just noticing some different sensations in my low back by just changing the position of my feet. Right? Find them parallel again. Okay, so we're going to come into this parallel. And as we come into a straddle forward fold, we want to keep that or maintain that length of spine. So I'm not folding at my waist. I'm folding at my hip flexors. Okay? So hands at your hips, reach forward with the heart, back with the tailbone. And I place my block at level three. I wanted to just start here. It's, it's well out in front of me. So I'm creating or maintaining that length in my spine. For me, I'm not feeling much of a stretch in the back of my legs. That's okay, that's not what I'm aiming for right now. I'm really just paying attention to the feet, what that does traveling up through my legs and where I feel this in my low back and hips. Okay, and just breathe here. And if you really want to, you can lower it. I mean, you can lower the block if you, if you want to. Notice how that feels for you, that's fine. But really maintaining spaciousness and length here for a moment. If you have the tendency to lock in your knee joints, micro bend them, please. 
so that you soften that joint. We don't want to lock into it. Now stay where you are and bring the toes out wide. Right? So I just brought my toes out wide. Notice what shifted, what changed. Where do you feel this? By changing that, just changing the feet and noticing what traveled up through the body. If it doesn't feel good to you, bring them parallel again. But if you can stay here and play with this, just kind of, it's not a wrong, it's not wrong, it's just different. All right, it really changes what you might be feeling in your knees for some of you. And then bring the feet parallel again. And then go ahead, bend the knees slightly, engage your core, hands to your hips, and come back up. Let's give the feet a rest. Let's kind of heel toe, heel toe, or jump and shake it out again. I don't know about you guys, my feet are feeling this. It's really feeling a lot of heat, a lot of work. Okay. All right, then we're going to find our feet um parallel once again and let's find the same width let's just start there for a moment okay and anchor into all four points of both feet they're equally weighted and then kind of bend the knees and just notice what happens to the knees when the toes are par when your feet are parallel and they kind of drop in just kind of feel that and then notice when we rotate the feet out and now bend and you should notice you can bend a little more deeply and more safely in the knees right so really noticing the position of our feet and how that affects the rest of the posture particularly here with the knees so because i want to come in and out of squats here for just a little bit minimize it as much as you need to we want to keep the toes out. I'm hoping that most of you felt the difference in the knees. I don't even really have knee stuff. And trying to keep my feet parallel and do this was really putting pressure underneath my kneecap for me. And I could feel my knees. It's really hard to be back with my buttocks, right? So when I bring my toes out, now I can more safely be in my knees. I'm taking my tailbone, I squat straight down and my knees can stay behind my toes. Right, so just play here a little bit, just kind of slow, small squats. All right, so for some of you, that may be a few inches. For others, it's going to be much deeper. We don't want to take your sits bones below the knees, though. Okay, so even if you have the ability to go really low here, keep the sits bones even with the knees. Notice what shifts in the knees when you collapse in the arch of your foot, right? If that's your tendency, you can start to see the knees bow in, anchor back to those outer edges of your feet in all four points, right? So let's go three more, nice slow, even squats here. And then the next one, you come back up. Heel toe, heel toe, walk it together, shake it out. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and find um, tree pose. We're gonna do a little balancing now that our feet are so awake, right? So just bring to mind if you have a favorite tree and you know, what kind of tree is that? And tap into that tree's energy, whatever that means to you. Really feel that in from your own heart. And imagine you are that tree. So trees, some trees' roots are more shallow, and some go really deep into the earth. Right? And some of that depends on age, and sometimes that depends on the type of tree it is. So notice how familiar are you with the roots of your favorite tree. And then we're going to keep the weight in our left foot. So 
we're rooted into the earth where all the nourishment comes from. Okay, so draw in that nourishment. Maybe for you it's an idea of drawing in support, you know, groundedness. And then we can today just take your right heel on your ankle, right toes stay in the floor just for a moment. Feel that. How balanced are you today? Every day is a little bit different depending on what we have going on. And then maybe it's in your practice today to bring the foot to the calf. If you have a wall nearby, feel free to use it. That's okay, sometimes we need to. Give yourself permission to modify. And then for some of you, maybe taking that foot up to the inner thigh. That right knee opens wide. Anchor down through that left foot, keep the hips square so that energy is traveling up through the spine. Hands to your heart to begin with. Find your drishti. You want to find a spot to stare at that's not moving. And maybe your branches grow. Connect into the energy of your favorite tree, which I'm not doing well here right now. Hard to talk and do this, I will admit. And then we'll slowly release that down, place both feet in the floor, grateful for both feet. My balance is definitely off on that side. We'll try the other side. Okay, some days we can hold them forever and really strong and steady, and other days we, we're in a bit of a storm. So, right foot anchored in the earth, root down. That one tree you picked didn't resonate with you as much as you thought, choose another, right? And then the left heel on the ankle, toes on the floor. Now we didn't cover this on the other side, but I did mention keeping the hips even. And what I mean by that is there is a tendency to just sink into that standing hip. We drop into it. So really lift up out of it, right? And that occurs from that energetically and literally pressing down through the feet to draw the energy up. And then that left foot, maybe the heel just stays there. Keep the toes in the floor today. Maybe the foot can come to the calf. And maybe the foot can come up to the inner thigh. Keep breathing and then decide whether you want to expand your branches. slowly release and shake that out. So I've noticed in my own practice with balancing poses that whatever side I start on it, it really doesn't matter whether it's the left or the right side. Oftentimes the first side is a little less steady and then the more centered I get, the second side is a little bit better. I don't know if you noticed that, um, but I, I typically notice that in my practice. All right, so let's go ahead and come to the front of your mat. And inhale, reach up, and exhale, fold forward. Walk both feet back, find down dog, kind of pedal out the feet a little bit again. And then go ahead and find your way into a child's pose. And let's go ahead and take a wide knee child's pose. So the knees go fairly wide, wider than your hips. The big toes touch, and then you draw back so the torso comes in between the thighs. Then you can bring your forehead to the floor, your hands, a fascia ball if you have it. 
Just letting go, softening the heart, letting the feet relax here. Feel the energy in the feet and follow the flow of your breath. Go ahead, find your way back to all fours and onto your backs. Um, have a block nearby. And let's take a moment, just take one of your feet and just gently massage it a bit. We did a lot of, we brought a lot of attention to our feet today. Just noticing the sensations there, give them a little love, appreciation. And then switch to the other side, the other foot. Let's take a few deep breaths into that. Place the feet back down into your mat. Arms by your side, palms down. Roll the shoulders underneath you. Heads neutral, palms in the floor, full length of the arms in the floor. And let's do a little uh, moving bridge, just the lower half of the body, press into the feet tuck the tailbone under and start to peel the spine up off the floor. That's our inhale. We take the breath in as we lift. And then the exhale brings us back down. Vertebrae by vertebrae. So very mindfully, it's like a little massage on the spine. Inhaling as we peel it up off the floor. And exhaling as we roll down. I'm going to give you some options here. You can continue to move in and out if that's feeling good to you. If you want to come up and um, hold in a more active pose, you can lift the hips up, pause here in two-legged table, or finding full bridge, interlace the hands underneath you. Arms are straight, and roll the shoulders under you, lifting through the heart and then lift even higher. So that's a more active bridge pose. Or the third option for those of you who choose is to take your block and place it in a supported bridge pose. So you can place it right on the sacrum or tailbone, tailbone sacrum area. And the arms can open wide, palms up, so the heart opens, the shoulders softly roll back. So you decide if you're using the block, you can bring your feet a little bit wider than hips, let the knees fall together. Or you can take the feet off the floor, bring the, and bring them to the ceiling. So take a moment, find your position you'd like to do and breathe. Just noticing what feels uh, nourishing or healing to you. Wherever 
wherever you're settling, stay connected to the breath. Nice, even breath in and out. about three to four more breaths here. And we're gonna go ahead, slowly release out of the pose. If you're using a block, just move it out of the way. Let's take our feet as wide as our mat. Open the arms wide and come into our double knee drop. So exhale, release the knees to one side. Inhale, just the top knee, so you open wide. And then exhale and release to the other side. And just since we've been paying attention to our feet today, just kind of notice how you roll from the inner edge of one foot to the outer edge of the other, across the bottom of the feet. Notice how your feet feel or are responding to the practice and the choices you made along the way. And then if you'd like to get the head involved, you can start to rotate the head the opposite direction the knees are going. And just move into a very gentle mild twist up through the spine and all the way up into the neck And you've gone equally side to side. Just bring the knees back up right and the feet hip width apart. Draw the knees into the chest, rounding the low back. And a little apanasana, inhale, arm lengths away, and exhale towards you. And then move into some knee circles, big or small. And switch directions. Maybe knees wide. And then we're going to go ahead and invite you into Shavasana. So you'll extend the legs out along the floor. Maybe you'd like to place something underneath your head or a rolled blanket underneath your knees. 
Once you've found your position, allow the feet to splay open, arms a little ways from your side, palms up. You can even gently roll the shoulder blades onto the back body so that the shoulders open a bit more, the heart opens. And when you found that position, really let go and drop into the gravity, into gravity. And once you've settled there, bring your attention into your breath. Simply follow the breath in and out without manipulating it or shaping it. I'm going to take you into a little bit of a pranayama practice to deepen your Shavasana experience today. So now I am going to invite you to lengthen the breath. Both the inhale and the exhale even. And then if you can do so comfortably from there, for the next about eight to 10 breaths, I'm gonna invite you into lengthening the exhale, doubling the length. So it's twice as long as your inhale. The intention here is to really let go more deeply on every exhale, relaxing more, surrendering, releasing, so that we become as open as we can to receive the gifts the practice held for us today, even if you're not sure what they were. And so opening to receiving. By letting go, it may be interfering with that. you complete those breaths, allow any shaping of the breath to fall away once again. It'll find its own natural rhythm. You may even become very quiet and very still. that breath doing its own thing, bring your awareness to your feet. Notice the sensations there. Take a moment to recognize where your feet have already taken you today from the time you got out of bed. Notice if you put shoes on right away, or did you walk barefoot? Do you step onto carpet, or is it hardwood floor or tile? What is the surface you walk on in your home? Do 
Is there a surface that's more pleasing to you? Some of the surfaces we walk on may feel warm or cold. Recognize all the surfaces we've walked on in our lifetime. Maybe it's sand between the toes. Even there, there's various textures. Some sand is a little rougher, coarse. Maybe soft and requires a lot of balance because it's so soft and warm. Sometimes it's almost too hot. We have to find our way closer to the ocean waves. There it becomes cooler, more firm. What about walking in a riverbed? Maybe there's some sand or maybe it's rocks and they're smooth or are they pointy? walked on pine needles. We know when they're lying smooth or when one pokes us. Walking on freshly cut green lawn. The difference if we're walking on that grass in the sunshine or in the shade. Maybe we've experienced walking on leaves. Are they wet or dry? Are they fluffy? or really compressed. Walking on cement, whether it's hot, maybe it's in the shade. All of these surfaces create a reaction in the body. And so guide yourself back into the surface that felt most at home or comfortable or, or pleasurable. The sensations were ones that you enjoyed. Go back to that surface. And allow yourself to rest in those pleasurable sensations moving up through the feet into the rest of the body. And rest there.
Just take a few deep breaths. Maybe a little, some gentle movement. And I'm going to share with you a reading by Susan Freiborg. I walk a new path on this late part of day, feeling at peace with the scenic trail and sharing the pulse of nature all around me. My thoughts are light enough to be carried along with the dove's airy call. I'm not feeling overwhelmed with finding the many penetrating answers to life's big questions. I don't feel any urgency to attend the latest seminar that will expose what's holding me back from discovering my personal truth. And I don't sense any need to seek or, and uncover the deepest of spiritual reason. Instead, I simply yield to the settling into the heart of where I am right now like a heron landing effortlessly to stand stoically in a pond. You learn in this life there are times to go forth and search for meaning, just as there are times to be still and let meaning find you exactly where you are in the truest of places. Go ahead and slowly roll to one side. Take a few breaths there. And then find your way to a seated position, bringing your palms together at your heart. Anjali Mudra, uniting the left and right sides of the mind and body and spirit, connecting them all. moment to honor yourself and this time that you took for you with today. May you be at peace. May your hearts remain open. May you awaken to the light of your true nature. May you be healed and may you be a source of healing for all beings on the planet. Thank you for allowing me to take the seat of teacher. Namaste.